Starking different. Like, st- like Stark? It's a new word. I think it's just Stark, yeah. yeah. We're Starking It does a seem like it should have word. an I-N-G on the right, end of it, though. Right. It's a Starking difference. I, I think know. If that had I been the, see, it's, the it's, norm, then right. we'd, that would, what would be you doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> yo, 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 what's up? It's Chris Sims Unbuttoned, and we are here. Ahmed Farid is here in all his glory, red sweatshirt and all, looking good. Right, a starking difference from his red pants. They don't. They, I'd like to actually see them together. Maybe one day we just go all red, <laughs> like Joe Red style. Riding Hood here. Yeah. You just do jump in on that. Uh, but what's up, everybody? Hope everybody's good. Wednesday, April seventeenth. We are eight days away from the NFL draft. You know it's going to be more draft talk here today. Linebacker safeties. I'm here with my expert host mm-hmm. and my expert evaluator, watcher of mm-hmm. draft guys, guy Ahmed Farid, novice film watcher, dude. Uh, we're going to look at these uh, players, and we'll see if we have any starking differences starking between differences. what we think and what the general draft community thinks on these guys. So the last two positions we, we've gotten here, I can't believe it. You've looked at a lot of dudes. I'm, I'm done. You're it's, done um, looking at dudes. It's three notes books. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, not every page is draft guys here because some of it's scribble or stuff we do on here. But, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, we're done. I feel good. It's like just buttoning up little guys that I, ooh, I heard about this guy, you know, late mid round. I haven't really dug in to watch that. But like for the meat and potatoes part of the draft, you know, first few rounds, the guys we're really going to talk about, yeah, I'm in a good spot. And ooh, it's a good. I feel relieved. I have like 48 hours of relief until, hey, we need a mock draft by Monday. Can you get that done? And now i got to get into that mode. And then we need you to rank the top 40 quarterbacks currently in the NFL, right, right. including That's these rookies radar we've never seen up. before. Exactly. So we always right. have you ranking people. That's yeah. what we like to do. Yeah. We just get you in your barn and rank people. Uh, three notebooks. I have been telling you for years that you got to go digital. I know. And I know. I know you get a lot out of actually writing it with your hand and pen, but you can do that on I, an iPad I can. now. I actually had a coach in the NFL who tried to sell me on it about four weeks ago, Oh, right, who was, like, showing me their iPad, yep. how they write in it, the notes, all of that, right? And I was like, oh, man. I, I was like, I think I brought up your name. I was like, my buddy, my co-host has been telling me this. And, like, my kids, one of them has, you know, the, the iPad with the little pencil on it. Yep. I, I do. I got to do it. Well, there is – I am big into the writing. I the think, writing yes, I do think cements that's it in my brain, right, as far as, like, typing. I'm not a seamless – just, oh, I can type without thinking a little bit to where I feel like it wouldn't stick because I'd be like, wait, well, wait, how do you, wh- where's the H E R, like, you know what I mean? And I'd be like, well, what was my thought? I'd forget, right? Yeah. So that's where the writing does really come in handy that way. Because I've used Microsoft OneNote, not yep. to be like a, like, but they are a sponsor for, yeah. uh, for us in the yeah. NFL and uh, our football night in America. And I separated all by position and by names. And so I just, novice film watcher guy, when you say a name, I click on the name, boom, all my information is yeah, there. That would be much easier than me trying to flip through pages going, <laughs> Wait, I didn't do this one alphabetical order. I don't know where he is. Although it is kind of like a song and dance, like an art that we have now. When I see you flipping furiously, yeah, trying to find a right. guy, I'm like, all right, I'm going to give a little background information on you're, this you're player. You're great at it. It actually time. does. You give me some filler time. <laughs> I, I I started off being like alphabetical order. Yeah. But then like every now and then, you know, you'll get to the alphabetical order thing and it's like, wait, the top two, three guys at the position are all at the top. And I'm like, I don't want to start with the top guys, right? Yeah. I'd like to sometimes get a gauge of like what everybody looks like a little and then go, oh, top guys, whoa, they are top. Or, whoa, they're not that much different than these guys that everybody's saying is the third rounder, right? Yeah. So I, that's where I start to juggle it and then it's all over. And I, that's where I am actually in the phase of the notebook right now. Well, luckily with these two positions, there are no top guys. <laughs> Uh, safeties. And, no, that's not true. There are top guys. There has to be. It's a function of how you do a list yeah. and, a, and a ranking. But there are no projected first round safeties. There are no projected first round linebackers as well. Technically, yes. Technically, although that's where we're going to get into a little difference here here with the safeties. So we'll do linebackers in a bit, but let, let's go through safeties. And what we'll do for linebackers, we're going to just go higher or lower. There, if you if you watched our what was it? What did we do this with? The that was last Wednesday. Running backs, right? Running backs. With the running backs, we just this is where they're projected. Yeah. Chris Chris thinks they may be better than this, worse than this, and that's where we'll go with the linebackers. Safeties will do that, but also you do have a top two. Uh, yeah, for your I, I think there's only there, in the safety conversation. I think there's only like legit two guys that go in the top forty, right? There's only two that I think are even in that conversation of like, hey, we would take them in the top forty. After that, 
You know, then it's like, oh, I don't know where the next one goes. Maybe late second, somewhere in there, right? Maybe a team has a specific need, at, you know, again, the safety position, which is which is different than how you and I grew up, right? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more, hey, system, what you know, type of defense are we calling for this situation? There's more situational need at safety now compared to the old days, right? The old days it was like, we want Ronnie Lott. At yeah. every safety position. Yes. Now, you know, some teams are like, wait, we don't want any Ronnie Lots. He doesn't cover well enough. What, you know what I mean? So uh, it is it is a little different there, and it, it's actually cool. It's been one of the uh, you know evolving things of the NFL. These two positions, safety yeah. and linebacker, have evolved. They were the neck roll positions for the longest time. Me saw heads, a ton of just, neck rolls. Yeah, right, right. Neck rolls, uh, absurdly big shoulder pads, right? Where yeah. you're like, what? Do you really need shoulder pads that big? <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Right? But, yeah, this was traditionally – Thumper. These were thumpers, right? Guys that we knew, hey, they can run, but that's not their calling card. Hitting, squaring people up, taking on blockers, right? Taking on fullbacks, tackling Emmett Smith in the hole. That was like what they were there to do. But with, you know, the offenses being spread out, the running quarterback, tight ends becoming more athletic, the invention of the slot receiver. Yeah. Oh, damn. What, what, now we have our thumping 260 pound middle linebacker covering Wes Welker on an option route. Oh, shit. We're screwed, right? So that's what's made everything change uh, at that position, at both of these positions. It really is kind of the same conversation. You know, old safeties are now linebackers. Linebackers are now like uh, he's an edge guy, defensive end, outside well, linebacker type of guy, right? Novice film watcher guy. When you look yeah. at these safeties too, they're playing all over. You all know, sometimes over. they're in the slot, sometimes yes. they're playing linebacker, exactly sometimes right. they're playing free safety. Exactly you know, right. Strong right. safety every once in a while too, and yep. so which I think is the way that the league is going. I mean, you look at baseball. I, I watch baseball all the time. And the defensive positions in baseball used to be, you're our third baseman. Yeah. You're our second baseman. Right. Now all these teams have players that are like, you play third, you play second, sometimes you play the outfield. And I feel like that's the philosophy defensively, too, in the NFL right now. And why wouldn't it be, right? It gives you just so much. There are so many injuries that you need that positional flexibility. Yeah, well, I think, you know, you, you look at your own football team, right? That, that's what I would say. Yeah. Your team, the Lions, right? They got that guy that's like what's Chauncey Gardner Johnson right is he a corner is he a safety I don't know they play yeah. base defense he's at corner if there's three linebackers in four defensive linemen he plays safety right yeah. that's what he is Brian Branch right? slot safety right slot safety right right oh oh wait but this time we want we want more coverage slot guy in the game oh Brian Branch get in the slot cover nickel hey next play damn the 49ers brought in an extra tight end we need the nickel guy to be a little bit better tackling and running and maybe take on like a fullback or whatever. Hey, CJ Gardner Johnson, you go to the nickel position, right? So that's where the game has evolved. Or maybe both of them are down there. And maybe it's like, hey, Brian Branch, you got kind of the coverage part of the nickel thing. And now we're in big dime and and we're in dime. And hey, CJ Gardner Johnson, you get down there to be kind of like a linebacker, but also, hey, he's fast in space and do all yeah. that too, right? So that that's the thing that is going on in the NFL and between slot receivers running backs out of the backfield and the way the tight ends are teams and the quarterbacks running teams realize they needed to get a little more athletic at linebacker in that safety spot so you have a top two this year in safety before Clearly. we get to that right. let's go to your top five last year so you're really slacking off compared to chris last year <laughs> you did five last year and here's who we saw uh Quan martin from illinois was your number one and then sydney brown you had a couple illinois you had illinois love in your safety department yes, last did. year brian branch uh you had as number three christopher smith and then jay ward uh i feel like you know i i'm biased i love brian branch last yeah, year he I was awesome. he looked really good right um what'd you think well i mean it, it's actually a pretty damn good class with like guys like christopher smith and jay ward we'll see where they go this will be a big for year for them they didn't really get to do a ton last year but those top three i think you know showed they belong for sure I'm a big fan of Jartavius Martin. You know that and what he is in the commander. Sidney Brown, when he got in for the Eagles, was damn good. And Brian Branch ended up stealing the show, as we know. Because Brian Branch became the one of the top nickels in football, period. Right? Our problem with Brian Branch was a little bit of like, what is he? Is he a corner? I don't think he's fast enough to be yeah. outside and play corner, right? Ooh, he's not terribly big, 
right? He's not. He wasn't like a wimp. He was. He was willing to mix it up and tackle. But you were like, wow, I don't know if he's you know quite physical and strong enough there. But man, when receivers make cuts and cut this way or that way, his hips and his feet are phenomenal. And he showed that one, he's I think a better tackler maybe than I even gave him credit for. And two, his ability to stick his foot in the ground, turn his hips against you know the jitterbug type of receiver, he's special in that department. Yeah. So yeah, you got something there. So uh, that's a good play. To, uh, to end off on yeah. as we go into this year's rankings because your top two will have two players that other people may not even have on their board in top safeties <laughs> because they don't call them safeties. Yeah. We've seen that. So I think far. that's changing with especially this first guy. Ooh, okay, all right. right. So top two safeties. Your number one safety in the 2024 draft class is? Cooper DeGene. What? Yes. He's right. a corner. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I think you're starting to see, right? I know we were texting a little last night. You're starting to hear... You know, everybody go, wait, he's a safety. Now, somebody, some people are still trying to hold on to the pipe dream of, like, I've said he's the number one corner for, you know, 10 months, and now I've heard from everybody he's not a corner. So I still think he could be a number one corner, but he's probably going to get drafted at safety, right? You're hearing yeah. that We've stuff? We've re-looked at the right. tape. We've re-looked at the tape. I've seen it 800 times, but now – unnamed really good coach told me I'm crazy and now I see it differently I <laughs> yeah. see it differently I do um so yeah C Cooper DeGene certainly worthy of a end of the first round type of draft spot right definitely I mean he's that you talk about we always talk about elite traits athlete all that yes now getting into the corner position let me just break that down for a second and why he's not a corner you know I know that hey straight line speed's really good physicality is really good those are safety things though that's not corner things I think when you break him down a little bit at the corner position right the movements are different it's not just about straight speed we know we want that right you always hear me we know we want four three or faster those are the the elite corners yep. but within doing that too you got to be able to like move and turn your hips and you could see there even that was not that impressive of a short area of movement he's got great hands if he catches the, I mean the balls around him he's gonna catch it you know and of course has ability to do some things after the catch as well but within okay playing the positions he's playing or played in college football right Corner is a different skill set from hips and feet and how you have to run that way, right? And where I would get into it a little bit where, let's just say Quinion Mitchell, right? Uh -huh. Top corner in the draft. He can be, you know, in all these weird positions, bodies turn this way. Oh, wait, the guy cut the other way. I can turn my hips and like, you're like, oh man, he's screwed. And then you're like, whoa, I mean, his hips are awesome. And he regained top speed in like a half a step and he's gaining ground on this guy, right? Cooper DeGene is not that guy. Cooper DeGene, when that happens, is like, oh, no, and it's a bunch of steps, and he either tries to hold the guy or he, oh, no, the guy flipped me around. Hold on, I got to redirect and get straight, and now I take off, right? And that's why I say he's made for safety. His best plays when you watch him on film are all – safety-ish type of plays. Hmm. One, he's physical. He tackles, takes on blocks, right? He is fast straight away, so when he pursues ball carriers, blitzes off the end of the line of scrimmage like a safety, running away, boom, he gets him, right? Oh, I'm outside. I'm playing zone, right? Again, where I'd like to say context clues, if he was the top corner in the draft, Iowa would have played man-to-man -man coverage, right? Hmm. But more times than not, he's sitting back. Oh, there's a toss. There's a run my way. He's very, wait, I'm coming downhill, straight line. I'm going to take my gap, I'll take the blocker on, or I'll take away the edge and make the running back come back inside, or I'll just make the plain old tackle, right? right? So that's safety stuff to me, and that's where he thrives, and that's where he's really good. But flipped around, turned around, oh no, wait, I got to turn and run with this guy? That's not his strength. So he's more of a straight line athlete that way. And that's why when we broke down corners, I said he's to me he's more Eric Weddle than he is top tier corner. Yeah. But really good football player. Really instinctive. And I think he's got that's what another reason I'd say he's made for safety. Read the quarterback. He's looking this way. I've watched film ball week, right? I don't have to turn my hips and do all this. I can just, oh, he's going to throw over there. I'm going to run, and I'm going to undercut that guy and intercept the football, right? That's the movements he is special at, and that's where I think, yeah, end of the first round is where we see Cooper DeGean. So after your cornerback rankings and he was not on there, yeah. people are going to be like, why do you hate Cooper DeGean so much? And now you can say he's number one at the position in my eh, exa eyes. Exactly. What position is that? Exactly. Safety right. is 
right. just the right position. Exactly. It was so hard to be a Iowa defensive player last year because their offense was so bad. Oh I was looking gosh. at the amount of plays that he played in some games versus yeah. Penn State. Yeah. 93 snaps for Cooper DeGene. That is insane. We just talked about Chris Jenkins last yeah, week for Michigan. Right. Played 40 at most throughout the year. They just had such a rotation. Makes life so much easier. Versus Purdue, 84 plays. That's insane. Versus Wisconsin, 79 plays. Yeah. It was like up and down. Their offense was three and out. It was I mean, three and out. That's what it was. And punt. Right? right? And I, I know you had the privilege Corey of covering Taylor. some of those exciting football games this year. So Cooper DeGene, <laughs> just to tell you, he turned 21 years old in February. So yeah. still, he's still young. Very. He was such a great athlete, yep. obviously, in high school. DB and quarterback threw for 3,400 yards. His senior year, with 35 passing touchdowns, had 12 1,200 rush yards. Now, this is Sioux Falls, South Dakota, but I'm sure there's some good players in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, and we have some – do we have basketball highlights? we got Nicole back there. Hello. W- welcome back, Nicole. we got oh. Nicole pushing the buttons. Here's Cooper White men can dunking. jump in this video. Okay? I, mean, this, I mean, this is making, you know, huge news in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I'm hey, sure. He's, he's, this is, he's an explosive, strong athlete. He's just not made to be a corner. Mm-hmm. Right, I would even say, look at his build, the I, way he, he does, is. I right? was just going to say that. It's safety-ish. That's not the way corners are usually not quite that thick and heavy-jointed the way he is. Right, So that's, again, where I just think he's, he's really got a chance to be – you know, special in that department. Yeah. And, you know, within that, hey, you know, hey, he played quarterback. He's played sports. Again, I think he's going to have great feel playing free safety in the back end. Great range from sideline to sideline. Great feel for, ooh, I've watched this on film. I'm going to go, like I said, you know, take a chance here and then get a pick, pick six, do that, right? You know, hey, we, hey, we need we hey, we're gonna bring in another safety here and go three safeties. Can you go down at nickel, right? I don't think you're gonna want him covering like man to man the jitterbug type of receivers we talk about, but playing zone and if it's more of a hey nickel big nickel, we need somebody that's strong because hey it's the 49ers, right? And we want to Kittle might go past the football and they might spread us out, so we need a little talent there. But you know they might condense it and then run the ball off the edge with McCaffrey, and we gotta have a guy that can really tackle down there and do do that right so that's where the beauty of Cooper DeGene you know really lies and uh yeah just be interesting to see who takes him there at the end of the first I, round I take back my slander of Sioux Falls South Dakota because he did go to high school in Iowa so he was right there in Iowa <laughs> didn't get a whole lot of uh, okay. recruits uh, recruiting uh, <laughs> invites which is crazy he was a third no second all-time in Iowa high school basketball history in points TJ Hawkinson number one yes Cooper DeGene number I, two and right. then Harrison Barnes I, former warrior for the current Sacramento King. He's three? He's three. The guy in the NBA is three? North, I think he went to North Carolina. I think yeah, he did. Barnes he went to right. North Carolina. That's exactly right. Uh, yep. Yeah, not as good as Cooper DeGene. So he has a fallback plan. If this uh, defensive back and safety thing does not work out for Cooper, who knows? Maybe the uh, Detroit Pistons could definitely use a guy. Yeah, like it's, it's uh, he again, a really good football player, good athlete, like we said, strong, right? Too, more of a straight liner. Right. You could see he read and reacts and knows and evaluates plays really well, but doesn't have the movement skills to play cornerback position in the NFL, at least not on a consistent basis. And then you get into, hey, that end of the first round, where does he go? Right. So here, here we go. That's a yeah, good question. Right? Great segue. JD's burner account. How do you value Cooper DeGene as a player? How high can you take safety? If a team views him as a Seattle scheme type of corner, does his draft value go up or down? So, yeah. Draft value for a guy like Cooper DeGene. Yeah, I, I mean, he's – he's. I don't even think what you want really even for Seattle scheme, mm. right? I still think it's still not enough in the coverage department even in that area. Could he get it done? To a degree, yes. But, no, I think more or less is the what we've kind of said here so far to this point is is kind of how you, you evaluate him. You know, and, that, and that's what he is. Again, he's he is that straight line. Oh, the run's coming here. I'm gonna again. If you even watch him, I don't know how much you watched of him. Open field tackling. He's not great at that, right? Because again, his hips and all of that are not that good. If he just sees the guy in the hole and he flies in there and just hey, shoot your gun and fly in there and you know fly at his legs, he's great that way. But when it comes to like, oh no, I'm in the open field and I got to break down and do that guy, he does not have those type of hips there. He is, again, I think made to be that guy uh, at the safety position. And, yeah, I think it's, you know, 
25, between 25 and 40, I guess is what I would say there. You would not be shocked if he's a first rounder. I would not. Like Green Bay has a needed safety or, you know, maybe not as much anymore. Xavier McKinney. Right. But again, you know, that, that could be a team I look at. OK, Tampa, I don't think that's happening. Arizona, that's not happening. Buffalo does have a need for safety. Right. They've tried to get a few guys there to kind of fill the void of no Micah Hyde and uh, no more Jordan Poyer. Mm. Um, but, you know, are they going to waste a first round pick on that? And they did get some value veteran guys to maybe fill the void so they're not desperate right so does that happen I don't know about that a lot of people I see with mock drafts have them going to the Ravens at 30 right but I think that was all up through the prism of corner the one thing the Ravens don't need is safeties they have arguably two of the 10 best safeties in the game I mean Hamilton's one of the best we know and freaking Marcus Williams is damn good free safety on the back end so I'm not sure about that 49ers there is maybe – there is a need for safety a little there. They do got Hufunga coming back, being mm-hmm. healthy, right? So I, that's where I just – I guess my thing is and when I get to the end of the first round, I just go, ooh, who's actually going to pull the trigger for him? I don't know if there's a team that I look at that just go, ooh, there's a desperate need at the safety position there, and that makes sense. So, yeah, yeah that's where I say 25 to 40, but no later than the early, sec, uh, early second round. Whoever does pull the trigger yeah. for Cooper DeGene will get your number one safety in this year's draft class. Yeah. Your number two safety in your top two. Right. You're also also your bottom I'm ranked safety. I'm putting myself out there. <laughs> your number two uh, ranked safety is also a player that many people think is a is a corner. Yeah. And one Devin McCourty, when he was on this podcast a couple weeks ago, really liked this guy. Yeah. Too. Your number two safety is Ennis Rakestraw, Missouri. Right. And, and a lot of the same conversations. In fact, he's. This is where again we talk about shapes and sizes and preference and all of that. Right. Here's a guy that's got pretty good hips, right? Hips are not the problem. This is the one where you go, no, no, he can't run fast enough straight away and accelerate like a corner needs to do. Because if he's wrong or gets beat, he's beat. It's over, right? Where I talk about Cooper DeGene, like if he had to just like turn and run straight away, you're like, oh, that's a uh, you know, guy got off the line of scrimmage, right? Okay, now he's got to turn and run. He could impress you with stuff like that, right? Where this guy, hey, you were being impressed with some of the quick, like, oh, wow, he changed direction. He stick his foot in the ground. That's great. Oh, wait, he got beat up field vertically? Oh, he's screwed. It's a touchdown. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's gone. See you later, right? So he might be a little bit more of a coverage Brian Branches, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson type of that. safety. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right? Where it's like, hey, he tackles. He brings it, right? He I mean, he's fun to watch in that department. He has no regard for his body, and I love that about him, right? But, yeah, do when we talk about corners, I always go, and again, we're in media and we're trying to simplify here. I'm going with, like, true cover corners. That's what I tried to go to. This guy, to me, is not a true cover corner. Nobody in football is going to go, I'm okay with him being outside on versus Jamar Chase on third and seven man to man nobody if you are you will be fired by the end of the year right but inside against a Hawkinson or some of these tight ends or some of the quicker like receivers like an Amon Ross St. Brown who might work the underneath part that stuff he's going to be really good let alone if he is in a traditional safety spot right he's going to be good coming downhill making tackles and you know for a traditional safety four five one four five four is is fast enough right Mm -hmm. Uh, you're not doing the same thing. So that's where I look at it. But, man, another guy with, um, you know, I, I, what I would say some elite elite twitch, elite quickness, and then elite physical violent reactions off of that. That's what you love about Enos Rakestraw. And yeah. like McCor- I don't think McCourty trusted him in coverage either like I did, but I think it's, again, finding that spot, safety, nickel type of hybrid that we know is very popular in the NFL. I think he'll fit there really well. I think we have his octagon. Yeah. Which shows some of his measurables right. here. Uh, he was wide for 1,500 snaps. He was a slot corner for 400, so that's what he did in college. And it's an, in- it's an unusual – because he doesn't have, even though he brings it, he plays with aggression for sure. He kind of has that Chris Sims like ability to, you know, 
like get get you pumped up yeah. after he makes a right? play. You're you like see, watching you him, see you're the like, energy. He's into it. You don't question whether he loves football or not, right? That's like one that's like again, those are things you look at and you go, oh. And, and again, that's how Chauncey Gardner Johnson was when he was yes. coming out. So the weight would be concerning to me. 14th percentile. Now yeah. this is even right compared to other defensive backs, right? right. Corner cornerbacks. Ooh, yeah. yeah. So he's small for a safety. He's here. slender. He's slender. He's long and longish and slender. Yeah. Right. And you can see by looking at that octagon and and the man himself without a shirt, right? Which you know, square shoulders, slender, a little bit you know longer that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's it's a it's a guy where like what did Brian Branch weigh last year? If you don't mind looking that up, Pete. <laughs> while we're talking about this, right? Because it's again, that's what I think we're talking about here. Is that similar type of position? So yeah, so one ninety. He had seven pounds on. He's S. got seven pounds and probably similar pr- height. Same, same height. Similar height. Right. Yeah, similar so, wingspan. So yes, yeah, similar it's, dude. It's, that's it's to me. It's kind of the the vision and version you you kind of look at him for. Hey, we're in base defense, right? It's a team. They got two tight ends. One, you know, one running back and two receivers. Hey, you play traditional safety here. And then, you know, as the ball's getting close to snap, we might roll you up close to the box, right? So now you can kind of be in there and get in the mix, right? Or, hey, we trust you covering a tight end. You're going to be okay there. That's cool. Get up there and cover the tight end man-to-man. That's good. So that's base defense. Hey, all right, now it's nickel. We're going to change. You know, does he stay at safety or do they move him down to that nickel depending on what it is there, the team they're playing and the down and distance and all of that. But I think generally that's what we're talking about. I don't think we're going to see life in the NFL where Enos Rakestraw is on the outside, on the regular, yeah. covering the top tier receivers in football. An anonymous NFC regional scout yeah. agrees with you. He says, quote, you can mix and match him in coverages, but I think there will be some man matchups that are going to be tough for him. Like he'll be great NFL.com. against Travis. Kelsey, right? Those I look at that and go, that, that he's, he's going to be good. Travis can't run from him. Travis's game is more about a little bit change yeah. of direction, slip and slide here and there, right? He'll be okay with that, right? But he gets with a speed burner in the in the slot who can really run straight away. Oh no, Valdez Scantling's in the slot or whatever. I'd go, oh my gosh, we better not play man to man right here because he's going to get toasted, right? That's what you worry about. Just but put put on some weight. Put player. on some weight is what I would say to Ennis. I don't, I don't want on. you to get hurt out there. So he is shooting up draft boards right now. As recently as December, he was a round six pick. How about that? Yeah. And now he is projected. Look at that. No one even knew about him. Right. Like, who is this guy? Yep. Um, Missouri started to have a good year. They're like, maybe they got some good players there. Uh, so now he is mid-second. We're looking 42nd overall. Um, and we're not doing this over, under, higher, lower for these guys. No. But do you think that's about right for I him? think that's about right. I don't think there's any way he's a first-round pick, okay? But I think he's a guy that, like, almost like Devin said, right, where, like, everybody's going to watch this film and go, man, I like this guy. I want him on my team. I just don't want a man-to-man against Justin Jefferson, right? Yeah. I don't want that. Yeah. But, damn, he's going to bring us attitude, toughness, swagger. He he's going to get in people's face, right? He's going to give energy to our locker room, all those type of things. That's where I like it. And, yeah, I think it's somewhere really between 33 and 43 is where you see Rake Straw yeah. land somewhere in there. And it's 13 forced incompletions. I looked at all of those. I mean, they're the same things you say. They're, they're, they're nice. They're fun to look at. Here, right, all right. in the middle of the field, kind yeah, of. Yeah, right. That's his area, right? Yep. You know, oh, the guy comes up to him and makes and breaks out. He kind of, you know, he makes a quick reaction. He puts his foot in the ground. He dives and he knocks it down right before the ball gets there. Right, it's all that stuff. That's where he is. That's where he should live, and that's what he's made to do in the NFL. Ennis the Menace. Ennis he, the Menace. He I heard Pete out say that. Strong. That, that will is, be his nickname. If he does, if he has, you're right. He is definitely going to have that nickname, and we're going to make sure he does. Ennis the Menace. So that way we know how to say his name, because if you don't say the, his name that way, it sounds like something else. It, 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 can, it definitely does. You can get does. in trouble right there. It definitely does. So those are your top two safeties. <laughs> yes. And we're closing the book on safety, but now we will look at the other safeties mm-hmm. who you did look at yep. and see if they are being projected around where they should be projected. And in fact, we're not even going to give you that option. Again, like last time, we're going to say where they're projected to be drafted, okay. and you have to say they're going to go higher, as in you know, better, yeah. taken earlier, right. or lower later. Yeah, cool. Okay, I so like it. Tyler Newbin is yep. the guy. Minnesota safety. This is the name that you hear oftentimes, like the best safety. If you do not 
called the gene and rake straw a safety. This is the name you hear most often. Exactly, the traditional version of it. Had a bunch of interceptions, uh, especially early. Had a couple against Nebraska in the season. We were watching that. Uh, He is a projected uh, second-round pick. So we'll get to that. Uh, Tyler Newbin, Minnesota, 6'1", 22 years old. 200 pounds. What do you think of him? Yeah, I, I mean, I like him. Again, right? We're not talking about a guy that we're. I'm expecting to see, you know, early on in the draft here, but a little bit more of your safety through the traditional lens. Does everything pretty well, right? I think more or less, though, he's a guy that you know, he's not going to overwhelm you with pure physical ability, right? He would worry me a little bit in the coverage aspect of what safeties are asked to do at times, right? He is most comfortable around the line of scrimmage, playing around the box, right? That, to me, is where he's good, is kind of like, hey, slipping box, slipping blocks, you know, getting to the ball carrier, seeing a hole open up and getting involved and getting up there, you know, in the hole to make the tackle. He's a pretty good open field tackler. He's got very good instincts, as you can even see from this play right here. in zone especially, He's got great feel. He knows what's coming. He knows where he's supposed to be. It's just not going to wow you with the pure, like, athletic ability right you're not going to go oh my gosh whoa did he accelerate or oh my gosh did you see how quickly he flipped and turned his hips and and ran to the sideline and knocked that go rat out of the receiver's hand right that's not going to be wowing it's not bad but it's not wowing there's a really good play against illinois i was watching uh, luke altmeyer was was looking uh, left, kind of looking him off that way, and then turned to, towards the center of the field. Yeah. And Newbin was able to flip, and he was covering like the outside receiver, and then he goes and breaks up a pass in the middle of the field. Like the hips are good. They are good. It's just the, the pure physical explosion off of it's not yeah. what you want, right? And yeah. I think that's probably part of the reason he didn't run at the combine or do anything there because, you know, I think if you look at it, you go, eh, if I had a guess, it'd be high four fives, probably four six-ish yeah. when you talk about it all together. He but, got outrun on his tape a few times. Like there was the Raging Cajuns game. It was like there was a guy that broke free running bro, and back. He and he couldn't run him out. Him. Or there was yes. a few where people get around the edge and you go, oh, he's going to run him down and the guy gets around the corner on him and he doesn't, you know, doesn't yeah. take the right angle because he thinks he's going to run him down and he doesn't, yep. right? You know, and that, that to me is where, like, hey, what I, one of the things I wrote as I went down here, I just would, you know, I'm not going to trust him in coverage, right? Range is a free safety would concern me a little bit, right? It's not going to be great where you're going to be like, hey, we got two speed burners on the outside and he's playing free safety and we feel like he'll be able to read the quarterback and break on the ball if they both run go routes. I'd be like, eh, I'm not sure if he's going to be great there, right? You want him around the box in some capacity that's where he's best he's comfortable you know moving around in the scrum right and for 199 he takes on blocks and navigate navigates his body really well in those areas right he's tough he's not afraid to mix it up right he is long right so even as a down safety and passing stuff and zone he's going to be a tough body to throw around and you add that to the instincts you know i think that'll make his athletic ability look a little bit better than it is yeah uh so, yeah, that's my assessment there. Where Where is his uh, – So know. before we get to that, yeah, real okay. quick, okay, PFF says it agrees with basically what you just said. Okay. He would likely make the most plays in a system that consistently uses maybe two deep coverages, allowing him to play free, robber, box safety roles yeah. too for him. Right. Uh, you talked to him at the Combine. Awesome, dude. Well, I want to hear him in his own words. Here's what he had to say to you and uh, Mike. A lot of the times we'll ask when a player knew that he was special, mm. but – we don't have to ask you. We already know. When you were eight, <laughs> yeah. you won a game. A pass thrown to you was intercepted. This is incredible. You How do tracked you know down this? the defender. How do you know this? We, are, we know everything. We are private we know everything. investigators <laughs> over That's here. actually crazy. I was actually thinking about this. Ripped other day. the ball away from him yeah. and then took it all the way back for a touchdown. Mm-hmm. Is that when you knew? Honestly, I think that's when everybody else knew. I didn't know. <laughs> I, was just, I was just playing football for real. I was just having fun at that point. But yeah, I, I don't know how you knew that. Yeah, against the Wheaton Rams. And you did, they running, you just took it right out, stripped him from behind, and said, I'm running the other way. Yeah, I didn't want to lose. That was, that was, that was been the game winning interception. Dude should have went down. I mean, he, kept, he kept running, so I just took it from him. That's amazing. <laughs> and that's when we knew. How did you guys find that out? I, How did Mike, Mike, find Mike that? found that out. I think, honestly, this is where like Matt Casey is phenomenal, yeah. right? Uh, when, when we're in scenarios like that at the Super Bowl or the yeah. Combine, yeah. 
he finds all these little nuggets, yeah. right? And he puts them on a note card yeah, of yeah. just like little interesting things like that. Yeah. And so I think pretty sure I'm pretty sure Pete's that was trying him. to claim credit. And maybe for this it would have been Pete. It could have been Pete. Pete <laughs> is new to that part of the game, yeah. but he did he not took as over. incredible. Yeah. He took over for Matt Casey. He did a pretty good damn good job. And maybe that was him that day. So yeah. it might have been. Pete, right. Yeah, Pete, Pete got way to excited, go, Pete. but, but, it, it, was might, you, but Pete. it still might have been Matt. But so Matt taught just, you, so way yeah. to go, Matt. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> AFC scouting director anonymously yeah. saying to right. NFL.com, I think his speed is the only thing you kind of worry about. His exactly. tackling is okay, but can get better. He's very instinctive. He's a good player. He'll go in round two. Mm. So he is 40th mm. overall is the line. Are you 40th? going higher Earlier or lower later? Low, 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 lower, low, later. low, 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 low. goes lower low, later? Low, 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 low. Good. Not a difference maker necessarily. No, good. I think he's a guy you're like, damn, I'm glad he's on him. our team, yes. right? We'll figure it out. But, I, you know, I, I would agree, and I appreciate you supporting me there with the AFC scouting director. The speed is the only thing you worry about. When the, when the speed is what you worry about and then they don't run the combine, you worry actually a little yeah. extra more. Because, really, what you start to go is go – if he knew he was going to run four, five, eight, he probably would have ran, right? That's yeah. a, and then that's going to scare people in, in front offices. Going to be like, ah, I don't even know if he would have ran that. He's probably a four, six guy. So the next guy did run at yeah. the combine is in the uh, 80th percentile for safeties. Javon Bullard for Georgia, five, ten and a half, nearly 200 pounds, turns 22 years old uh, in September. Um, so this is a guy who played in 2022, mostly slot corner. Yeah. And then last year it was three to one free safety. So a position change for Javon Bullard. Uh, your thoughts on the jo the Georgia Bulldog? Well, uh, like every Georgia Bulldog, right? They're tough and they know how to play football. That's kind of the thing that always jumps out, right? They know the rules. You know, when they got to tackle or hit or take on a block, right? You never question that. Kirby Smart's got that type of culture down there, and you don't play unless you're tough down there in Georgia, right? So that, that's the first thing you know. I like his body. You know, you kind of alluded to it. He's built more like a corner. It's more like a nickel than it actually is a safety, yeah. okay? Right? I do like his legs. Got some thick legs, right? Has that. But I think the first thing is, and this is where it's a little weird, you know, I, I, again, I don't think the athlete itself is all that elite. I don't think the athlete you watch on film is conducive to what you saw the numbers at the combine. I think that would be the first thing I would argue right there, right? And I think that's probably part of the reason he got moved from nickel to free safety was because they were like, wait, he can't really turn and run with some of these guys like we would like, right? That would be the big problem. He's a little bit of a short strider, right? He doesn't really – never opens up. He doesn't have an extra gear. Hmm. And, yeah, if he gets caught flat-footed or gets – takes one wrong step and somebody gets by him, I mean, it's gone. It's see you later. There's no – makeup speed to talk about or any of that so that's the problem there the problem is like he's a willing physical tackler he will do that right he takes a lot of bad angles because he thinks he's faster than he is or whatever where you see a lot of missed tackles or misplays in, in that capacity so it's like a little bit like the guy we just talked about in the fact that I don't trust him in coverage right? Hmm. I think he's a little bit more of that nickel safety hybrid, right? But the coverage thing really concerns me. And, you know, even though he's a tough physical football player, right? I don't think he's like, oh, we're going to put him in the box and be in there as a strong safety, yeah. right? So I definitely was a little, he's a tweener. you know, he's a tweener. He's a tweener, and I'm not sure exactly where he would fit on an NFL defense. Yeah, still struggling to find maybe a spot in 2022. He did have some highlight plays, knocked Marvin Harrison Jr. out of the college football yeah, playoff semifinal right. game, yep. had two interceptions, that's a fumble I mean, he'll recovery. He'll hit you if it's there. There's no doubt. TCU right. in the national championship game. He was the game's uh, defensive MVP. But then, as you know, then they move him to free safety after all those accomplishments and so uh, nfl.com lance zerline says georgia's provided the blueprint by playing him as a big nickel with run support modest in man covered duties nfl teams would be wise to follow suit here perhaps i think so but he's not that big so you mentioned he's a his height is 11th percentile he's got a heptagon uh, his weight is in the 18th percentile wingspan in the 18th percentile you see all those measurables are very close to the center of the of the heptagon yes, which means right. they're in the lower percentile no i, I you know and again it, it it it's it is and it's not always the case right but it, it's one of those where you like i i don't see one five one ten on film i don't nor do i see four four seven yeah right? he would have been a guy i would have guessed again i would have gone like oh four five eight somewhere there 
right? But but either way, he good job by him. But yeah, that's to me where you gotta be you gotta be a little picky here, right? You know, it is you know hips are just okay in coverage. You said it. He's a tweener. He is smart. He is pretty instinctive. He's just not a great overall athlete. And I think you got to pick the situations of where and when you're going to play him. That would be my big thing, right? Because he can't cover anybody. That that that's the problem, right? He'll tackle anybody, right? He he's good in the, I think the big nickel. I got to stop the run type of situation, right? But, man, again, back to that, I get into, oh, yeah, I'd want him a nickel, but, damn, I hope they don't pass the ball because I don't want him to cover anybody. That's what bothers me. If it's zone, hey, he'll be okay. He'll see it. You know, he'll be able to evaluate it. And, again, if somebody comes in his area and it's like, oh, you're going to throw the ball, he will hit you and knock your chest off, right? That's what he will do. But at the same time, if he's at that area there and, like, oh, no, you got to play man-to-man, and all of a sudden, uh uh-oh, Cooper Cup got in the slot and it's you against him, Cooper Cup's going to be wide open for a bunch of 25-yard crossing routes. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that, right? And that's where, to me, again, yeah, there's some, some work to be done, and he's definitely a specialized nickel safety type of guy. Projected round two, 53rd overall in mock drafts. Are you going higher or lower? I'm going lower there. This drill has become taking everyone lower and later. I know. Well, we might not as many lower as today as we had, I think, you know, with the running running backs backs there. Yeah. Um, Speaks to the position, though, because these all these players are very close to each other, right? They they have other strengths and weaknesses, but as an overall prospect, they're all very close. They are. And, and, you know, I think what this too is, is, you know, what's going to be interesting and what we'll see is, you know, some teams are going to go, wait, we need a traditional safety. And then we're going to go, and some are going to go, whoa, we need a guy that's, you know, more of that nickel-ish type of safety. We need one that can come in the box and be a real thumper in the run game. So it's what you're looking for, on your team and what you already have that is going to be kind of the uh, the eye of the beauty of the but I, beauty of the beholder? Right? Yeah, is that what the, the beauty of the beholder. Right. It's always the beholder, the beauty that they have and <laughs> looking at these other players, something like that. Uh, our next player, uh, the beauty of our beholder, Jaden Hicks, Washington State. Oh. Uh, this was a, uh, a player who's 6'2", a little taller, 211 pounds, yeah. 21 years old, was just a three-star recruit out of high school, started the last two seasons at Washington State. So when you looked at uh, Jaden Hicks, he played mostly in the box last year, more, more free safety in 2022. So linebacker in the box, bigger guy. Yeah, he's a traditional safety, right? I would say he's the first guy I would sit here to talk to you and go, no, this is traditional free safety, strong safety. We're never playing him at nickel, right? That's what he is, mm-hmm. right? I think when you encompass both, I think he'd be kind of in the conversation for best traditional safety type of guy, right? I like his game all around, Jaden Hicks, right? You know, I said it old school, you know, he's big, tall, he's long, right? He's got better legs than you think, right? When I first turned on the film, I was like, oh, he's a little skinny. But then, you know, you see a few angles and you go, oh, no, his legs got a little more there than, than I really would have thought, right? He's got pretty good hips, Right to be able to turn and coverage and oh I get flipped around I got this guy oh oh wait I'm dropping to a zone oh no wait the tight end crossed me this way I got to turn and run and get with them right I found that stuff for the bigger type of safety I was like oh it's kind of impressive right and then you see that he ran a six eight eight three cone drill and you go well okay that that's impressive too I mean that's kind of like elite receiver type of movement in the three cone drill mm-hmm. when you talk about that flips the hips he's impressive right right you know. Um, he he one of the things i wrote is like his speed he didn't run at the combine but like man i mean when i watched him and have to close on receivers or close on the ball in the air i was kind of impressed in that department yeah right i don't know what he would run i would have guessed probably high four five maybe mid four five somewhere in that range but i think there's enough speed there with the loose hips and everything we're talking about and the length to where i go i'm comfortable with him at free safety too i think he's going to be okay in that department right so there was a lot of things to to like their good, loose, fluid athlete who you can definitely trust in the box to be an extra linebacker or whatever, that's where he's most comfortable, right? I think you probably saw the same thing. So novice film watcher guy yeah. made some notes about Jaden Hicks out of Washington State. Yep. Uh, 
he looked good versus the run. He's coming up to do damage. He's coming in up the to run do damage. Game. That's I, right. I thought he had pretty good instincts. I uh, thought he had some pretty good speed to the sideline and some real standout plays versus the run. Now, his bad plays versus the run seem to just be over-aggressiveness mostly right. for him. Coming down too fast, yeah. doesn't break down, guy makes a move, and now he's like, oh, and they go right by him, or he gets a hand on him and they go by, or he slips and falls and right trying to make a, an abrupt yeah. cut at the last second. And he made some plays in the past game, too. I mean, he had a That's pick six I mean. against Colorado. Uh-huh. Which looked good, uh-huh. and then he uh, picked off Michael Penix on a deep throw. He later had some on in the other year. plays too, where the balls were completed on him. Where I would go, that was still a good play. Like I was impressed with how he played the ball, closed on the ball, and all of that. Right? It wasn't like perfect every time, but there's no. I mean, there's no doubt, right? You know, between one of the things I wrote down is like I was like guys like this in today's NFL. Sometimes they get asked to put on ten pounds and they play middle linebacker. Hmm. I mean, really, some of the Seattle schemes, they might look at him and go, we. Think he could play linebacker. I don't know, right? But either way, it's along those lines. Got a real nose for the football. That that's the big thing. Like where maybe we'd have talked about DeGene and Rakestraw being instinctive, you know, in, in a lot of ways, and DeGene, especially in the pass game, like having a feel. This guy had a great feel for run game overall. You could tell he was he knew where he was supposed to fit as the play was developing. He was already seeing it coming. Takes on blocks really well, right? Good strength. With, with bigger people blocking him to get off a block, you know, hold his ground a little bit there, right? That, that's where, you know, I was really, really impressed, right? Uh, really good read and react skills, right? There, he sees a play, there's no hesitation, and that, to your point, is why he misses tackles because sometimes he's like, I see it, here I come, I'm a meathead, and then he overruns it or whatever else, right? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I was a fan of this guy. I really was, and uh, I think he's a really good traditional free safety, strong safety type that can kind of do both. And if he's got to get him in there as big nickel, big dime linebacker-ish, not on the receiver, but truly linebacker, I think teams are going to look at him there and go, he's he can do it. It's funny. He's kind of a tweener in a good way, yeah. right? It gives them it's multiple a tweener areas. in another way. It's a tweener in the bigger safety way, right? Yep. He gives right? you options. He gives you options. It's not the cover safety tweener. It's the bigger, stronger safety tweener. Yep. And there's there's different tweeners at the position now. It's so specific to what you want. Projected round two, yeah, 58th overall. Ooh. PFF calls him a tone-setting tackler. Gosh. 58th overall. Wow. Still pretty high. That, it is still pretty high. I, I, mm. Higher or lower later than that? I feel like if it's right in that range, right? Oh. You know, it's right If there. only you could say they got it right, but that's I, part of the rules of the game. <laughs> you can't say that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Miss Lippy. <laughs> um, I think that. I would probably go lower here too. Yeah, I think I would go lower, so but I don't think it'll like be the much. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it would be much. Like if he got drafted at fifty six or fifty eight, I'd go. I I get it. I like it. Like I get if he it. goes ahead of Bullard or oh, Newbin, you will you will be like, I, yeah, that makes sense. I'm, to me, it does a hundred percent right. But I still think I as a whole, and I haven't seen all of them. It feels like all of these guys are a little over drafted in mock drafts or where people think they're going to go in my opinion uh but we'll see where that goes but i, I think that's close to the range okay. it's that late second early third type of spot there so we're getting into the third round guys now projected third round pick out of utah the safety cole bishop 6'2, so another taller guy 206 pounds from georgia was a three-star recruit uh, started 29 of the 36 games played in three seasons at Utah. Team captain last year. That shows up on the tape immediately. He's just like pointing, directing people around. And so everybody's going to gonna love that. Super comfortable yep. as a leader. How about as a player on the field? Well, there, there's well, oh there's no, some things. Always, well, no, there's some things that stand out. Okay. okay right. Oof. I mean, you know me, right? I'm a little racist when it comes to football stuff, okay? <laughs> uh, I know I'm being silly, everybody. I'm yeah. just going, but, you know, I see white safety, and I'm like, I don't know, can he run? What's it going to be like, right? Yeah. Okay, well, the first thing, and that's, honestly, it's the first thing you ask. To be honest with you, I yeah. did not know he was white until you just said that. For whatever reason, I just. <laughs> I love it. I was just like, no, I'm I looking at him. Yep, he is white. Yep, okay. yep. He is every bit as Cole Bishop <laughs> white as you would think the Bishop yes. guy should be, right? Yeah. But uh, he I is. I don't see color and safety, but whatever. <laughs> he is Continue. a phenomenal. He's a phenomenal athlete, and yeah. he's got good legs, good muscle overall, right? You know, a little low cut. 
Um, but damn, I mean, it's there's a lot to like here with this football player. And then you talk about like hips and coverage, right? Sticking his foot in the ground, driving on the ball, right? Oh, backpedal. Okay. Oh, wait, I got to stick my foot in the ground of the backpedal and now come down and get involved in the run game. I mean, it's, it's seamless there. It's really damn good, right? Now, I don't think the athlete – is quite as good as the combine numbers. That's what I thought too. Okay, I was good. like, I look because I look at the combine numbers right. first, and I was like, oh They're man, this guy's going to. Well, so right. we have his nonagon here, right. and look at that. Look at all the athletic traits here. It's like the forty-yard dash in the eighty-fourth percentile gets off the ball well. The ten-yard split was pretty good. Vertical jump, eighty-six percentile, uh, and he's bigger too. Height, eighty-fifth percentile. So you're like, man, a bigger guy who still runs fast. He's going to be a beast. On tape, small arms, low cut, as I said, right? Yeah, th- right? Third percentile in our Pete's th- asking me, does arms matter? And it does a little for a safety. Yeah. You know, safeties are a lot of times are in zone. And like, I don't, some of the best safeties and teams I played against is like, man, when the safety's long, it's like, damn, the field seems smaller, right? Yeah. That's where, it, and then, you know, just like we talk about with like DNs or, or tackles or anything like that. Right, safeties are a lot of times they got to take on blocks, so their ability to kind of get their hands on people and get them off. That's where there is a little value in arm length for for you know safety in that position. It's not something you just want to totally disregard there, right? But I'm, I mean, I'm with you. The athlete was good. Yeah. Right. I didn't think like watching it as novice film watcher guy. I was like, the tape doesn't show anything that he does particularly really well. Nothing elite in right. one area of the game. Yeah. Right. I, I think that's probably very fair to say. Right. And again, I think this is a good athlete, but like when, when I hear one, five, two and the 10, I'm expecting like, whoa, this guy's going to have rockets up his ass running around the football field. You know, it's not quite to that capacity. Right. It's four, 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 uh, four, four, five, 40. Again, he's fast on film, but I would have, if you would have asked me, I would have gone, it's four, five, two, right. Something, somewhere that, right. You know, physicality. He's he's pretty good in that department. Again, it's not going to wow you, yeah. but he's not like I'm not going to sit here and ever go, oh, he's afraid of contact or he doesn't want to mix it up there. He'll do all of that, right? He's not going to like knock your head off or do anything like that. He's very good in knowing, like you said, where he's supposed to be, where everybody's supposed to be, and he does his job, right? He doesn't chase things, right? When it's like, hey, wait, you could go make the tackle here, but your job is to not let this blocker have the edge. And you gotta force him back inside. He he shows that awareness to go. Wait, I gotta do my job and cut him inside for everybody else. I maybe could make the tackle, but if I don't, he's gonna be gone for a touchdown, right? So that's where I like that. Um, he does come down aggressive, right? There is no hesitation. You know, we talked about it. It's not gonna be boom, wow, like oh my gosh, I can't believe he did it that way. The hips are pretty good as far as coverage and 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 that is concerned. He's to me more of that free safety. Right or uh, excuse me, strong safety, big nickel type of player. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. he can do free safety. Right, but but I think you know he is best and most comfortable kind of in and around the box again, yeah. and right? which is interesting because he played more free safety this past yeah. year than he had in his first two right. seasons combined, and so it was an adjustment period, maybe a little out of position. Yeah, for him. Yeah, I think that you know. He is the type of guy I look at between the size and the strength a little again, too, where I go, he's going to be that safety, like, big nickel type. Hey, this is a good tight end, right? We need a guy who can, you know, cover a little bit and got a little size and strength to take on a Mark Andrews. If he gives you, you know, the old wing push before he breaks out, he's going to be able to handle that and move with that guy. That, to me, is where he would, would fit, right? Plays tough. He's a strong, good athlete. Right there's some things you want some more of in each area, but it's still you know pretty damn good and certainly has starting safety caliber traits. Projected third round pick, so we'll say middle of the third round. Are you going higher or lower hmm. later than mid third round? Mid third round, huh? Yeah. So mid third round, you're talking about 80s somewhere in there. I'm gonna go low. I mean higher. Higher, excuse me. Higher. He gets drafted before that. So our first higher. First higher. He goes higher. earlier than mid-third round. Yeah, I think it's it's not going to be much more than that, but yeah. it's going to be higher. I would say it's, it's you know, right before pick 80 or yeah. pick 80, somewhere in there that I would say we, we see him go. We have put all of the running backs, all of the safeties in this little area um, of I, the draft, I, which does make sense. I think that the third and fourth is where we start to see runs on yeah, this, this position, along with the linebacker position that we'll get to here in a little while. All right, so the next player we're going to look at, 
Kalen Bullock, USC, mm. also a projected mm. third round pick, 6'2, 188, 20 years old, so young. He's from Pasadena, California, so went to his hometown school there, played wide receiver in high school, started 32 of the 38 games in three years at USC. And this past year was first team all Pac 12. The credentials sound pretty good. How'd the tape look? Hey, this is my mofo right here. I, I, yeah. You do? You too? I was like, is it just the USC jersey? Because I like Marshawn Lloyd, too. No, this I was like, do I just like, am I biased dude, towards this jersey? This dude can play, Kalen Bullock. To me, it's like, you know, again, I am always love that, that pleasant surprise guy, right? Where you don't know what to expect. I haven't heard much buzz about him. First thing is, I mean, yeah, he's long as hell. We're talking praying mantis type of guy. It's He looks like a receiver almost to a degree. I mean, if there's a negative, it's like, yeah, I'd wish his body was a little thicker. I wish his legs were a little thicker. He's 6'2". He's 188, right? Right? Uh, so that's where you go, ah, I, I wish it was a little different in that department. Okay? So then when you see the guy that skinny, the first thing that goes, game, is he going to tackle? Is he going to hit? Yeah. Right? Yes, he is. Now, again, it's not like he's Ronnie Lott. And yeah. going to do that. But there is no, like, fear of the player. Hmm. He will stick his head in there, shoulder in there, and mix it up no matter what. He plays safety in the way of, like, I'm the safety. I have to save the day, too. That's the other thing I like, too. Yeah. Right? Whether he can run people down if they break free, right? Or he's just like, wait, I got to get this guy down. I'm the last line of defense. I'm going to get him down. I might look bad. I might get run over, right, and look kind of stupid, but he's going down, right? So that's I, – I thought he was – more than a mm. willing tackler. That's interesting because I like, and I don't know exactly yeah. what games you're watching, but right. I did see somewhere he was more reluctant as a as a run stopper. Man, there were, I, I saw, and I thought that was because I saw he was in the second percentile for weight, right? And so maybe I could have looked at the wrong person no, too I mean, because I am the novice no, film watcher no, guy. I don't think you got to worry about that. Yeah. Listen, like I thought he was th- a more reluctant at some. Are points. there tapes of like if there are spots where you go, wait, he's coming down and there's a blocker there and he's going to square him up? No, he's not always going to do that, yeah. right? But that's not something I think he's going to be asked to do. That's where I wouldn't look at it and go, you know, that's going to be his job in the NFL. That's what he's going to do. This is total. Free safety, coverage safety type of guy, yeah. right? Yeah. He moves so well yes. that you go, he could probably play corner in the NFL. Yeah, it's right? funny you say that because who, who else was saying that? It was, uh, yeah, Lance Zerline from NFL.com. If he, if he runs well enough at the combine, which he did, he was in the 75th percentile yeah. for safeties, right. uh, there might be a team more interested in his skill set as a corner right. than as a boom-bust safety. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, I, I wouldn't be shocked. He, he would be the type of guy that like a Seattle scheme would love him at corner. Right. His hips are greasy good. Right. His feet, his ability to like turn, put the foot in the ground, break on a ball. I mean, it's really f-ing good. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's where I like it. Right. I mean, he's he's yeah. got it, great yeah. feel. You could see the receiver history and how he catches the ball, plays the ball, whatever. I think his range is a free safety sideline to sideline because of his hips. And he's got pretty good long speed and all that. He's going to be a, a pain in the ass in that department. Right. So that's where, you know, I really like him, let alone the ball skills themselves, I thought were really good. You know, again, another guy that, hey, there was a few plays where people caught the ball, but I went, damn, that was a good job making it competitive. That wasn't an easy spot he was in. And he made it competitive and dove or made him miss the ball, whatever, right? He is made to match up with the NFL tight end and that kind of guy. Uh, Or even a bigger receiver if they got to put him out there man-to-man. Right, like a T. Higgins of the world, somebody that you know may not blow by him or anything, but you go, hey, his length will be annoying for a guy like that. Yep. Yeah, I think that's where he works. Right, like in coverage, he did. It's just like it kind of pops. He just moves so smooth and grace. It's just like, man, that guy's covering a lot of ground at yeah. free safety. Yeah, you know your your reluctance thing, right? You know, I don't want to discredit that yeah they're, they're, he's not that that's not who he is he's yeah. not going to be oh we need him to come down here and take on kyle use check and knock him out right yeah i was more of the and this is where i got to be careful how i phrase these things i'm more in the when i see this kind of guy i start to go oh i, I know what he is right okay mm-hmm. will he just make the tackle Right. That's the thing. That's more of what I looked at it yep. with, through the wait. The guy's coming through the hole. He wasn't like, oh, oh, man, I slipped and he went by me. Right. There's not that or like just getting totally shaken or anything like that. He's still putting his body in harm's it way. It was there. It's I not it's not it's not oh, I'm going to knock you out or f- 
you up yes. here, right? To but your I, point. I will put my body but in I this will, position. But I yes. will go there and put my shoulder down, and I'm going to get run over. And that's what I meant. That's what I meant by safety, right? To me, that's the free safety. You're saving yeah. the day. you got to be able to do that. And that's where I felt like he was you know, more than enough in that department. But this is yep. a total free safety, coverage safety kind of guy, mm -hmm. right? You know, And I liked his open field tackling. That's, to me, a big thing with, when you're talking about free safeties because a lot of times it's like, oh, no, this guy flew out through the, the B gap in the running game, and he is free, and it's just me, and he's got the whole field, and he gets him to the ground, right? So that's, that's kind of the prism of how I looked at him. Um, change of direction really good. Read and react again. I like that. You know, best coverage safety in the draft. That's that's what I wrote. Wait, even over well, Cooper DeGene. Well, I was kind of like, you know, yeah. I he think, looks that he does. I look think the part. if I had to trust him against man to man against somebody, a receiver or something like that, I would trust Kalen Bullock over Cooper DeGene. Okay. Yeah. Now, if it's a free safety and it's a tough sweep to the left. And I gotta have one guy fly down there like a kamikaze and maybe take on a block and make a tackle. I'm taking Cooper DeGene, no doubt about it. Or if I need a guy coming off the edge on second and four, and we're playing the Lions and they're gonna run the ball, I need and I need a guy down at the end of the line of scrimmage to blitz or be a part of that conversation. I want yeah. Cooper DeGene for sure, right yeah. over Kalen Bullock, right. All right, so that that is it. Oh wait, no, we gotta do the. We we haven't done this. Yeah, yet. No, projected you didn't do it yet. mid third round pick, right. Will he go higher? I'm gonna earlier? go. I'm gonna go higher on earlier. this one too. I am. I'm Someone gonna go will higher. See those tantalizing cover skills. I think he's a safe pick in a lot of ways because it's the, because of the versatility. Yeah. Right. Where they're gonna go? Wait, wait. I mean, yeah, he can do free safety, but damn, we might have something here at corner. Let's see how this goes. Or if we wanted to put on an extra ten pounds or something like that, and, and, and slows and him exactly down a little bit. Right. It's not the worst thing ever. It, it could be exactly right. You know. So that that's you know again, he could be cool Marcus Williams free safety. He could be uh, who am I? Rasul Douglas at corner, right? I mean, it really could be that kind of guy there, and, and I'll be interested to. But I liked him; he was a pleasant surprise, and the jerseys are cool too. To the jerseys point. do look good. Yeah. It's USC; uh, it's top top uniform in college football. So that closes the book on safeties. Let's yeah. go to linebackers right now. And we only looked at a handful of these guys. There's no one projected in the first round right now. Um, so let's go with PFT Ghost, who has a question for you. Okay. Uh, how does or why does it feel like these two positions, linebacker and safety, often have the least amount of athletic freaks coming out of the draft every year? Does oh. it feel like that to you? <sighs> That's funny. That's interesting. Yeah, it, I mean, I think it's just a little all over the place In right now. In some ways, I feel like they're more versatile. It's like the edge guys have one skill that's like, that's awesome. These players have to have... A lot, a of, lot of things where they're not terrible at. They're in coverage, open field tackling, right? You know, that's all part of the game. Now, got to be able to run. It's a feature, not a, not a bug. You know, I, I think like what he's probably alluding to is just that the our old school freaky linebacker that we think along those lines well, is like, not like as yeah. much of a thing anymore. The Ray Lewis type, the Brian Urlacher type, right? I think that's what maybe he's alluding to. I'm not sure there. The Ronnie right? Lott, the just that guy. That yes, right now it's 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 you know middle linebacker. The best middle linebackers in football, yeah, are hitters and whatever else. But they're not like maybe those big physical freaks that way, right? Fred Warner, you know, 240, right? It's it's, it's small for the old days at linebacker, mm -hmm. but that's what he is. Roquan Smith, same thing. But I think there's a little bit more about, yeah, speed and explosion at the position more. Um, but, you know, safety the last few years, I think he's probably right. We haven't had a ton of freaks there at that position, right? I don't think we have. I mean, I'm trying to think of, you know, certain guys. And I think, again, too, it's a little bit because we don't know what guys are going to be used or how they're viewed, right? Like Xavier McKinney is one of the best safeties in football, you know. It's safety, nickel slot. What is he? I don't know. He does everything a little bit, right? So so it's. I think just it's, it's all over the place, the position, right. I guess, is what I would say. Here are your rankings from last year where yeah. you did you did a top five. And we got uh, Diane Henley was your number one. Trenton Simpson, number two. Jack Campbell was the only one of those, right, that went in the first round. Yes. A lot of people thought no linebacker would go in the first round. And Jack Campbell was okay. He was not all – he did not – wasn't the greatest No, he's year. not my cup of tea. 
right? He's not that, but he was good. He knows what he's going to do. He's big, he's long, and he moves really well. And I think a lot of the teams are looking at t- players through – you know, the pass game prism now more than the, oh, I got to get him to fill the A gap, yeah. right? And I think that's that's how this position's being looked at a little differently. Ivan Pace Jr., though, your number five, he was not on the boards for many, like, many people out there. That's one I'm proud of. Your bowling ball man really came on strong. He, he played awesome, right? I mean, he played awesome for the Minnesota Vikings and, and Brian Flores. So, yeah, that that's one I'm proud of. Trenton Simpson is um, – who the hell drafted Trenton Simpson? Um, I'm I'm blanking so here. This is not good because I just went the two. other day. Wait, did did he go to the? He's a Ra- Ravens. He's the Ravens. That the, he's part of the reason why they let Patrick Queen go. Right? They're gonna go. Wait, Trenton Simpson. We he's an athlete. We're gonna start grooming him to be the next guy along. You know, Roquan Smith. Uh, so that'll be interesting. And then I would think this is the year we see. You know, my number one guy, Dayon Henley from uh, Washington State, get on the field there with, with the Rams a lot more. All right, so let's get into it this year. We don't yeah. have a top five, but we do have higher lower for the guys that are but consensus. Wait, one more thing. One board. more thing. Already a one more thing. I, well, because, like, you got me going with, like, the freaky athletes and linebacker okay. thing. Yeah, you know, I don't know what – it, it's interesting in this way because, like, look, look, like, the Browns. Let's look at the top defenses in football. Okay. They have Jeremiah wusu Koromoa. I mean, you you know me. A few years ago, that Top was one freak. of my favorite, right? Yeah. For sure, right? The Jets got C.J. Mosley and Quinn and Williams, right? Quincy Williams, excuse me. Yep. They're Freaks. both kind of freaky athletes, right? The Chiefs, Nick Bolton, I would say he's freaky for sure, mm-hmm. right? The Ravens with Roquan and Patrick Queen from last year, right? That we know, right? The 49ers, Fred Warner, Dre Greenlaw, they had Al Shazier, right, before that. right. So I think there's maybe more freaky ones out there than we're giving credit is what sure. I'm saying. Currently. Yeah, but currently. Not, we're not, the draft, but the is, draft not is not producing them. them right. Hmm. You're right. Well, Or, I mean, obviously the draft produced them, but yeah. the community of the NFL, like with Fred Warner when he came out, I think everybody was like, hey, he's a good athlete, but he's kind of skinny. Well, and can he do this type of stuff? So there was questions there. He was a third rounder right. in 2018. Right. So maybe good linebackers, good and freaky linebackers are – grown in the NFL and not I, in college. I think there's some of that to it. I, you know, again, college football has hurt the middle linebacker position, you know, from the traditional standpoint. Again, the game is just like, oh, screen over there, screen over there, quarterback run there. I just run to a straight line ever. Then they get in the NFL and it's like, no, no, you got to read like this play, this guard's pulling, this guy's blocking down. We've taught you keys to look at and what yeah. you got to do off of that. And there's a learning curve there. Is there something to if you were in college and the, the game is so much sideline to sideline and quick screens, like if you had a Fred Warner, what's the most impactful position to play a guy like that in the college game? I mean, would you want to play him at linebacker or are there? Are there- yeah, I think so. I, I, yeah, I think so. I think that's part of the reason, too, we're seeing in the NFL right now the linebacker position is just about like athletes again, too. Mm-hmm. It's just because of that right there. Like, let's just put him in the middle. He can run down the quarterback. He can run down the running back. And if they throw a screen to the receiver, he can run him down, too. Right. That That's what they're doing. All right. And, you know, maybe that's where. It's being misevaluated a little bit. Yeah. I, I, it, it's a hard one to, to put my finger on, honestly. Well, and that was one more thing brought to you by Columbo, Good which is streaming Columbo. on Peacock, where it's the only place all where you can stream ten all seasons. 10 seasons. Boom. Only we on got you there. Peacock. Edrin Cooper, yeah. Texas A&M mm-hmm. linebacker, yeah. projected uh, the first linebacker off the board, but that would be in round two at the 30, uh, 41st overall pick as of right now. So as we switch over to linebackers, the top linebacker out there, uh, 6'2", 230, was uh, a team high in tackles this past year. First team All-American. So he has the accolades, but again, does he have it on film? He, he does. I mean, he does. He's a, he is what we've kind of been talking about incredible athlete that pops right away on football on the football film right i mean it's long it's high cut waist it's great looking legs right it's not what you expect for like a traditional linebacker to look like a little bit right i think in a lot of ways like if you turn on the film you'd go damn he just looks like a big safety yeah. he looks like some of the guys we just talked about really right but he does have a few more pounds than that and a little bit more length than that and he's got a little bit more playing strength than any of the safeties we talk about now again like you could see right 
I hear from his videos of his personal pro day, the athlete is real, right? The, 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 so you're going to love all that stuff. You know, again, him being able to run down the seam against a tight end or, you know, oh, wait, you know, uh, uh, awesome slot receivers running a route on me in the middle of the field. Oh, he broke this way. Now I got to run with him and tackle him as he catches the ball. He's going to be good at all of that stuff. Sideline to sideline, toss sweeps, all of that. Great, right? I, you know, again, the the physicality department is going to be where it's all about, right? It's, it's, it's a guy that's I, – I can't sit here and tell you it's incredible play strength. You know, more times than not, I feel like he kind of wants to go around the blocker to get to the ball carrier. He can find lanes and go he's, untouched, he's, and that's what he's looking he's for. He's really of the time. good at that, right? It's it's again his ability to kind of bend and weave through and you know get to the ball carrier is good, but at the same time too, that's going to scare the shit out of a lot of defensive coordinators too, because they're going to be like, I don't know where he's going and I don't know where to, you know, he had this gap and he kind of left his gap to go get the tackle and now the guy's running for a touchdown, right? So those are the things that are going to be. I think a little scary as far as like maybe if you're looking for a run stopping middle linebacker in that department, that's where it's different. That's what you're looking. I, I think that's the interesting thing about yeah. what you're looking for in a prospect is like what are what are the things that could render all of his good traits you know non-existent? It just it, it eliminates it all. And his weight is in the 17th percentile. It's the nonagon for Edrin Cooper. All his athletic traits are awesome. It's just like all right, 40 yard dash, 93rd percentile, exactly 10 yard right. split, 88 percentile. Right, but. Is he a big enough dude where all that other stuff can can play on the field, or do we, does he have one glaring weakness that brings it all down? Yeah, that's where I question. Right, I just I don't know if there's enough physicality and strength for me to sit here and go right away. He's an every down NFL linebacker, right? You know, I, I certainly think he can be that. Right? I mean, again, this is a guy that's a, a physical specimen in a lot of ways, right? Especially with that wingspan. But, yeah, this might be, hey, year one, he's only in on third downs or if a team, you know, has this personnel set in, right? And we're going to work on him to take on blocks and wrong shoulder things and spill, spill the running back over the top of the pulling guard, whatever, right? Those are the things you're going to be worried about. But, you know, you're playing a team that's maybe spread one week and all that. Hey, hey shit, we might not start him this week. This might be the week to do it, right? He can kind of, oh, follow the running back. Oh, wait, the running back didn't get the ball. The quarterback's keeping off the edge. He'll be able to run down and get that guy before he makes a lot of yards or do that. That's yeah. where he's really good. But I think that's where, you know, at first you're going to have to start kind of through that, you know, uh, type of scope with the football player. Athletic space type of guy. Not like, hey, we're playing the Lions and it's it's second and four and uh, Montgomery's in and it's yeah. three tight ends and now we got to stop ISO right. That's not what you're going to want him yeah. in there for. And Edrian right. Cooper has no more kneecaps anymore. He's just like lost <laughs> them both them against the Lions. Right. Uh, so like if you watch some of his game, like South Carolina game, he's flying around, like dislodging the ball from a ball carrier. Like he, his highlights, look, they look awesome. They look awesome. Um, but then Sometimes he's flying a little too much, and he over pursues it. Time like it works against him at, at times. Right, Lance got to play a little more controlled game that way. For NFL.com says play uh, plays each snap with unbridled passion and intensity for sure. So he is projected as the 41st overall pick, round number two. I'm gonna say lower there too. So he'll, you think he'll go later? A little later, later than it the won't 41st be much over. later. But I, I, you know, again, I'm gonna say like. Yeah, forty's a little too high. I would say, you know, we get into the fifty range. I think that's kind of maybe where you start to see Edger and Cooper go. That that would be my my bet. Get ready, buddy. It says, do you see some edge reps at the next level for Edger and Cooper, given his measurables, athleticism, plus blitzing ability? And so he had seven sacks. I, I, know. I did look at him. Yeah. And I think he was unblocked in six of them. Yeah, so he I was. <laughs> he just gets there with pure speed, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's you know that. We'll see what he is like as at the edge, right? I mean, again, he's an athlete with long arms, great first step, and and he does he's he's bendable and pliable like we talked about, right? Now, you know, again, like we've always talked about, running around the edge in the NFL, you're you're going against a whole different animal at tackle than than any other spot on the football field of power and strength and stuff like that. But you know, I, he's got some of the tools there to where I'm sure they'll try it out or give him a little shot in preseason and training camp and yeah. see what he looks like. And, hey, could he be a thing, hey, in year one when we go, hey, it's third and 12, we want to get four, five, six great athletes on. And one time he's playing DN, and now we moved our DN into the D tackle, right? And now we got kind of four freaks that are athletic and long rushing the passer. Certainly could see that being a, a part of his uh, – 
you know, versatility or arsenal yeah. in year one. If you're a defensive coordinator, a fun tool to have in your toolkit for yeah. sure. He's got a body and oh, like you know, I saw Zerline wrote like Devin Lloyd, right? The kid uh, that got drafted okay. a middle linebacker from Utah a few years ago. It's that type of body and athleticism except it's just not the physicality of the that's why Devin Lloyd was a 24th pick of the draft or whatever because he had a lot of these things we're talking about with this guy yet you were like when they run it up the middle he stops people right he he brings it right and that's where he became a top pick the, you know the things we talk about as negatives are gonna are gonna scare some of these d coordinators out there so Cooper is fast yes but not as fast as Peyton Wilson Whoa. NC State turns 24 on Sunday so an older prospect here was the Chuck Bednarik award winner for the nation's top defender in 2013 and the Buckus award winner for the nation's top linebacker he's got all the trophies in his trophy case and his 40 yard dash at the combine 4.43 that was better than 16 wide receivers at the combine including Roma Dunze who you have as a top wide receiver yeah. in this draft so he has a very interesting uh, chart and Tomas Pena says to you Peyton Wilson might not be your LB1 but I'm sure you're going to love his style. Good size, speed, instincts, plays with no regard for his life. Does Thomas Pena know you? Do you like Peyton Wilson? <laughs> he does know me pretty well. He does know he you. He is a regular homie. Does right? he know you on your love of Peyton Wilson? No, he does not. Oh. Because, like, where I want to go to Tomas, it's just go, like, Tomas, you know me. And when it comes to middle linebackers, I'm, I'm a little bit more of the kamikaze killer type, right? And that, to me, is not what Peyton Wilson is. He plays with regard for his life, I, unfortunately. I, I, he values his life. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you know, I know you're, you're watching a few things and seeing that, too. I mean, I mean, are you seeing that, too? So right? From novice things film, you saw? Thank yeah. you for deferring to Novice Film Watcher, guy. Uh, first line, I go, does not play very big and strong. Notre Dame had him in a blender. He was blocked pretty easily, and it did not t take any of the NDOLs – oh, did not take on any of the Notre Dame offensive line and tight ends. I mean, that's – you you said it right. I mean, that kind of stands yeah. true to all the games. It's all the same things. It's a little bit of all what we're talking about, you know, what we just talked about with Cooper, except I think it's even to a bigger extent here, right? I'm less – I'm even less impressed with his physicality as compared to Cooper, let alone I don't know if I necessarily even love his measurables as much as Cooper. I don't. I don't. You know, I think Cooper is more explosive, more athletic. He's longer, right? I think he has more strength than than Peyton Wilson. As much as I didn't like, like, yeah, Cooper getting off blocks, taking on box, I'd go, he's better than Peyton Wilson at doing it. That's what it would, would bother me, right? You know, I feel a little bit like this is the same way I felt with, I always forget his name, the Arkansas linebacker last year. Was it Drew Sanders, right? Am mm, I? I think so. Then the Broncos Took, took him right uh I want to say that's what it was but I, I know it's Sanders I just can't remember yeah it, but it's I felt the same way where it's like hey everybody's in love with the athlete and I know he moves well and he can run but you know I I'm I I don't trust him with David Montgomery up the middle on third and two I don't nor do I nor do I trust him you know with anybody blocking him he, yeah, he has a hard time getting off blocks. He gets moved off of blocks, right? He doesn't really deliver blows as a tackler or as somebody that takes on blocks in that department, right? And I'm not, you know, I'm not in love with his body, right? You know, the other guy I know is in his, is is not real big either, but he's long and has levers and has better play strength. This is a guy that, I mean, almost instantly I was like, is he thick and strong enough to even play linebacker in the NFL? That That's what I wondered. Hmm. So, you know, again, I like the speed. I got all that. I also, honestly, and at the end of this, started to write, can he play safety? Could he be more of like a Kyle Duggar type of like safety linebacker type of hybrid? One of the taller linebackers, yes. but in the 26th percentile for weight, arms short, hand size short, but all those athletic traits, which is funny because you watch him in pass coverage too, and you're like, I don't, I don't necessarily see the 40-yard dash – Definitely show not. up there. Definitely. I think he has, a, he has a, a little bit harder time changing directions, it almost seems I, like. I, he's not going. the bendable, pliable guy we just talked about with Cooper, who you just felt like he can get going fast and no matter what direction he's in or wherever his body yeah. positioning is, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I think, you know, all those things concern me about him a little bit. 
You know, he's just not my type of linebacker, right? I, I know I'm a little old school here, and I know there's value for these type of guys. And again, he does he does have speed. He is a good athlete. Don't get me wrong. But you, I mean, I think you know me well enough now to know that when it comes to this position, again, you know, my defense would never have guys like this playing linebacker. They just wouldn't. I I, I would more err on like this guy might mess up, but he's gonna knock your head off messing up. Right, I'm I'm more of that guy. That's what I believe in. That's kind of what I grew up in, and it's what I was around in the NFL too, honestly. So that's why I believe in it. Like you know, Derek Brooks of the world, and Ryan Neese, who I played with, and Keith Bullock of the Tennessee Titans. Right, those are those type of guys. Um, so yeah. you know that that's that's just kind of you know my thought on that that injury. I mean it, that position. And no shame in in having those Notre Dame offensive linemen and tight ends be able to handle you. I mean they were pretty they good this past year, but right. I looked at his game against Marshall too, and they locked him up quite a bit. He's too. It's so locked it wasn't up just with a, a lot of people, elite right. company, exactly right. And he has an injury history too. Unfortunately, not to not to crap on Peyton Wilson Day. I yep. don't want to make that today, but he has a torn ACL in 2017, another knee injury in 2018, and had season-ending shoulder surgery or shoulder injury in the second game of the 2022 season Listen, so I didn't even know any of this until yeah. I was reading to watch the film right and when I saw that I went wait and people are still putting him in the second round for the draft like those four lines you just said are knocking him down two rounds like I I would say at least yeah we want a middle linebacker that's got an injury history and his shoulders don't hang, handle contact right and he's got an ACL injury, and also he's not really that big and thick, anyways. Yeah. Right? And the lack of physicality could be partly because he's like, dang, I don't want to get hurt again. My shoulder or my knee again. One hundred percent reasonable. I, I, exactly right. So, Projected round two pick, fifty third overall. Know. Well, so you you're know going, where? Yes, yeah. you're going higher. Yeah, or lower. lower. <laughs> <laughs> our own exercise. I am confused by my our uh, own yeah. exercise. Yeah, here. it's lower, uh, later. lower later. Lower later. I'm yeah. gonna say it ends up being like fourth round. Right. That's okay. what I would say. Like yep. early fourth is where you start to see him go there. Um, maybe I'm wrong. We'll see where it goes. Our next guy is from the University of Michigan, Junior Colston. He's a projected round two pick as well. 6'2", two, almost 240, 21 years old. So um, he uh, was adopted as a young. He's got a really cool story. And you heard Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh loved this guy. Yeah. Uh, the first thing I saw in America was a Michigan hat, he said, when he was nine. Uh, that's what all of my family members were wearing. They're big Michigan fans. And so um, a tragic upbringing to, that brought him there to uh, to Tennessee. And then and then Michigan, born in Haiti. And so he's got a really cool backstory. He was a four-star recruit. And then this past year had a team-high 95 tackles for the national champion Wolverines. Started all 15 games for Michigan as well. So... We have a photo, too, here, I think, of Junior Colston in the national championship uh, game with Cass on both of his hands. So it's like this is a guy who just played with injury, played through pain. You see Washington in the background there. It's just yep. like he can he can barely point his finger. I think he had his cast made so that he could give the, someone that, hey, how's it going? Good job, buddy over there. Um, <laughs> Junior Colston, all-around tough guy. You have reached your... Junior Colston yeah, printed in your there. notes. All yeah. right. Enough filibustering by me. <laughs> Good job. What'd you think of Junior? I really like Junior. Junior's my cup of tea when we talk about middle linebacker. Is it perfect? No. Okay. But it's damn good and more along the lines of like the things we've talked about, right? I mean, got a great body, got a great build. There's a thickness there that leads you to believe right away as you watch the film to go, wait, he looks like a guy that should hit some people and do that, right? So that that's like right away has a look and a body type that I'm more in belief in, right? Now, you know, it, like where there's areas to grow, could he be a little more instinctive sometimes? And can he get off blocks a little bit better? Okay, sure, right? Yeah, maybe a little bit. But damn, still, I look at it and go, he's made to play middle linebacker in the NFL. He's plenty athletic, right? I know he didn't do the combine or any of the testing there, but I would guess four or five-ish type of speed, maybe four, five, five, four, five, six, right? But he's comfortable in these areas right here. 
I mean, he brings it. He takes on blockers, right? He's not afraid to square up people in the hole and make tackles that way, right? I think he's got to, you know, just continue to play some football and, you know, become a little hair more instinctive of, like, there's a few plays where I want to go, like, oh, I wish his read and react skills were just a hair faster. Like, hey, the hole's there. Get up in there in the hole. Why are you kind of still sitting there, like, kind of like, hey, I'm going to wait a second, right? There's some of that. Um, But – I think all in all, like, again, this would be the guy to guy I would trust a middle linebacker more than compared to the other guys we talked about, right? Plenty athletic in, in the pass game. You know, yeah, he's not as good as Cooper from Texas A&M in that department. But, like, to your point with the uh, the NC State kid, I'd go – you know, the NC State kid, yeah, he's fast straight away. But like you said, like moving and coverage and all that, it wasn't that great. I would mm-hmm. go, it's, I feel like almost every bit is good with Colson. Let alone I trust him way more in the traditional run game sense compared to the other guy. And that's where, yeah, I kind of find Colson as being my favorite linebacker I watch. Yeah, he, and you told me that before I watched him. So it probably colored the way I saw Junior Colson as well as my love of the University of Michigan. But, um, yeah, his negatively graded run plays are ma- mainly getting you know caught misdirection and getting caught up in the mess getting caught in the mix because he does have the strength it looks like and there's one play in particular in the semifinal game against Alabama it's him and Caden Proctor who's 6'7 and 355 pounds he kind of just stands him up with one arm does not lose his balance holds him off long enough yeah uh, and then makes a tackle on the ball carrier then I'm like dang that's a strong I think his is just like you know it's more like you you reckon you said the background and all that. I think it's a little bit more of just like he's just got to keep playing and get used to the game, right? I don't see physical issues with this game, you know. Like you said, like I wish hey you could get off blocks a little bit be- better. Wish he could feel the play a little bit better. That to me was more of the, you know, the complaints I had. I was never like ah oh, I wish he would have hit this guy harder. Oh I wish he would have took on yeah. the blocker, right? Man, he kind of looked like he didn't really want to square up that ball carrier and tackle him there, right? right? None of that. None of that. It was, you know, all those type of things that we talked about where I want to be like, wait, there's the hole. Go get it. Or you see the guard pulling. You know they're going there. Get over there. Yeah. Why are you still kind of hopping in place going, let me make sure the running back follows them, right? There's just that. But that to me is polish, coaching, and – you know, I don't think you start from middle linebacker at Michigan with Jim Harbaugh as your coach unless you got the core principles for that staff to be that guy. So, yeah, I like him the most out of all the linebackers I watch. And to your point about in the passing game, it did look like like if you caught one underneath on Junior Colson, you were probably going to get tackled. You're going to get hit. Yeah. He's going to drive hit. on yes. it, and he's going to bring you down. And he's he's a pretty good open field tackler. <laughs> Agreed. You know, and then you even see plays where, okay, yeah, he's in the middle, and now, oh, he's responsible for a guy running a deep cross right he's kind of playing zone but it's like a match zone so now he's got to kind of turn and run and get over there I I think he's very good in those departments right so to me he's the the only linebacker I watched and I think I only watched like 10 of them that I went like he can do everything on an NFL field we don't have to worry about what the down the distance the personnel set or anything like that he's going to be fine and I think that's the the beauty in uh, Junior Colston Projected round two, 57th overall. Ooh, so we'll I'm gonna go, go over. I'm gonna go higher. Earlier. I'm so going he's gonna higher. go earlier than that. I am. I I think he's the only guy that the NFL teams are gonna look at and go, wait, he's for sure a good middle linebacker on first, second, and third down, right? Boom. That's it. And I think they go from there. And yeah, I, I would expect I expect him to be the first uh linebacker off the board. Okay, so he's your he's your favorite of the yeah, linebackers. Right. There are some people that have Jeremiah Trotter as yeah. their favorite linebacker. Mm-hmm. Clemson projected round three pick now in mock drafts. I think that's fallen a little bit. Oh yeah, it has. He was a top forty projected pick back in December. Six foot, two hundred and twenty eight pounds, twenty one years old, from Haynesport Township, New Jersey. So you have to, no matter what his tape showed, you number have to like Number one him. player in the draft. No. Son of, you'll never guess this, <laughs> Jeremiah Trotter. 11 right. seasons in the NFL, member of the Eagles Hall of Fame. We have, uh, w- here we go. Here's, oh, what a great picture. Wow, there's uh, yeah Jeremiah Jr. on the right. 
Yep, there's big Jeremiah. Dad, Senior. You could see. Oh, and there's dad is, dad is a big dude, right? Dad is like, you know, middle linebacker that had to step on a scale on Friday in the NFL locker room because yeah. we had to make sure he wasn't 280 pounds for the game that weekend, right? Yes. He was one of those guys that I'm going to say middle linebacker. You know, I don't know what he was listed at, Pete. Maybe you could look it up, but I'm going to guess he was like 268, right? <laughs> Back to our conversation of what oh. linebackers used to look like in the old days. We have we have a comparison, right? Do yeah. we have that? Do between, we? Oh, is that just the graphic of their measurements? Oh, here it is. Oh, nice. Good job back there, Gabby, I assume. And oh, Nicole there we go. There it is. So here's senior and junior. So, yeah, senior was 261. Same height, basically. Senior was 261. He's 228. Yes. Longer arm senior had, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, senior is what we talked about at the start. He's is a thumper, right? That, that's yep. what he was. You you felt good. You were like, wait, we're playing the most powerful run team in the history of football. Oh, we got Jeremy Jack Trider at middle linebacker. That's cool. That's good. We'll be okay. We'll be okay. I mean, Gruden used to literally say, I just feel better getting off the bus with Jeremiah Trotter. That's yeah. what he used to say, right? He didn't even really play for us. He didn't. He was older yeah. in his career and all that, right? And I was going through my spleen rehab and all that, but I, he used to make me chuckle with that because, you know, yeah, he's he looks a part of the middle linebacker. So do you feel better getting off the bus with Jeremiah Trotter Jr.? Not necessarily, okay. right? You know, one, you, you know me, I'm, I'm not a, a, usually a lover of the smaller type of linebacker, right? Mm -hmm. That would be the first thing I would say. And I just, you know, again, there's some instincts there that you like about his game, definitely. But I think it all goes back to the physical attributes and it's just not being enough there for where I see people saying he might get drafted, right? That would be the, the biggest problem. The athlete himself is just less than, right? For being six foot 228, I mean, I don't know. Again, I know you're new to this film watching stuff, Very but, new. but I would have guessed like he runs like high four sixes is what I would have guessed on film. Maybe four seven is right. Really like I, I wrote down, I wrote four. Si so yeah, does not, you know, and then I think when you couple that with like, wait, it's not a great athlete. And then he's not all that physical either. Right. Again, can read plays, can be instinctive, can react well at times, but taking on blocks, stopping ball carriers in their tracks and in the hole and, and you know, hey, he stopped right there. No, that, that's not what he's going to be great at, right? He's, he does have a problem getting off blocks. Um, he's, he's not great as far as in coverage and change of direction ability, and you can see in open field tackling too. It's a little less than in that department as well, right? So, yeah, that's where I kind of come to it with Jeremiah Trotter and go, yeah, I, I, I don't look at it as like a – we're going to be talking about him on the second day of the draft type of football player. It feels like it's Clemson and the name have maybe propped him up in the eyes of uh, the scouting world a little bit. So if you just watched him as a pass rusher against Notre Dame, you'd be like, man, that guy's great. He had three sacks, showed some good agility and dodging some blocks there. Um, but outside of that, wasn't really a big factor in the run game in that game. No. Uh, was around plays, but not really involved in plays right. in the run game. Right, he gets to a lot of plays where you go, oh, he saw that play coming, but then you go, well, but nothing happened. Yeah. Right? Like, he got there, and but he didn't make the tackle, or, you know, he was blocked out of the way or whatever else, and that's where it's just like, eh, eh. I wish he would have got in there a little bit. I wish he would have stopped that blocker. I wish he would have made the tackle in the hole right there. Um, yeah. Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. What no. are you know, and, thoughts you had there? To your point, same thing that you said. When targeted in the pass game, gave up a lot of completions and was not great at open no. field tacklings, and, and you question the speed. Yeah. in those situations. I think it's. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm. I don't think we're saying or you know anybody that's watched him. I don't think would have many differences there. I think it's it's pretty apparent. I think that's probably part of the reason you said right, he seems to be falling a little bit or whatever. He was a top 40 pick right. in December, and now he is projected round three. So I'll give you the over-under at mid-third round pick. I'm going we, lower there. You think he would go later? Yeah, he's lower, going to later, later. later in the draft. You know, Because it, it does seem like the bust potential, unfortunately, is I, I, I hear somewhat you. high. There's, just, there's not anything to look at right now to go, ooh, right? I think there's something you can unlock or, or bring to the table here, right? And we'll see. Maybe he can make those adjustments as he gets into the NFL. But, yeah, I mean, not real big, not real explosive, not real physical is not – 
you know, second or third round material, in, in my opinion, when it comes to the linebacker position. All right. And that is it. Those are the linebackers we're going to look at. And it's Booyah. a big day. It's a big day because you are done looking at dudes for a while. Yes. And we're also 100 days to the Olympic Summer Whoa. Games. We are 100 days out from the Paris Olympics. The countdown is on. You can tune in this summer. NBC and Peacock is where you can watch the Olympics, in case you didn't know, to see the greatest athletes in the world go for gold in the city of light. So uh, it's going to be a huge deal. We were talking about it before the podcast here. Yes. With Matt Casey we're will be involved. We're having Paris France Day here in the office. We got Fran Fran you know, yeah. French flags everywhere, yeah. and we're celebrating the 100th day. Uh, Dessert. To the to a hundredth day to the like you know again this company nbc My the gosh. olympics the work that goes in the stress that guys and people put in to it in this building is incredible uh it really is and you are i mean you're lucky you're big time you are stressed out most of the you get to relax during this time I, right I, I the, during the olympics time yeah and i will be stressed out yeah i'll be uh you'll be in paris I'll be France, going there. Though, that's so the plan to be there enjoying yourself it could always change though right. it could always change they could right. say i mean we'd actually Damn. rather have you, you not go i think but. you should demand right now that we do a podcast from paris france i think that how awesome would I think that you be? should be like i you know we we've you know we have a calling we need to do one from the eiffel tower can you <laughs> can you get that you done? took me to vegas for like a day just to be out there yeah, we, we could do that debated you know? our fourth we can, down we, detroit we, lions we've calls. expanded into the uk yes we got a good following there between this a chris sims on button and pft yes you know we might have to get over to Paris now. We go to Paris, to and then we go to Brazil and do a live show there in anticipation <laughs> of our Peacock game. Damn, let's I like it. Let's take the show let's international just be world travelers. Let's, let's get do uh, that. let's get platinum level on Delta for, yeah, for next baby. year. I so like it. You've done it. You've yep. done it, Chris. Thank you, sir. But we're not done with draft content. No, there's a dr actual draft to still go. Oh, here. is there? I didn't know. <laughs> yep, we'll be. Uh, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna continue to stay on top of this. We got Monday. We're going 2024 mock draft, right? Yeah. So I'll hit that up. I will not be here for that. What? That's going to I, I know. Are you going to Paris I, or something? I'm not going yeah. to I'm going to Oregon actually. Are to you? Hang out with her spring Damn. guys. Damn. Okay. Big just, Ten crew. just leave your job just to go <laughs> hang out with people. Well, cool. I heard no I, problem. when Connor was on, I was like, "All right, I got to listen to this to hear what they talk about." And it's just like a, ba a bash session on Ahmed <laughs> off the beginning. <laughs> you heard it? And so I, I was, was like, waiting. "I am... it took so long for you to say something." <laughs> I, forgo I actually had forgotten about it until just now. Right. And so I was like, "Screw it. I'm not coming the next Monday either. <laughs> yeah, good. You're going to Oregon. Yeah. Uh, yep. But we're gonna we'll continue down that mock draft Monday, Wednesday, final draft. Ask me anything. Hopefully you'll be here with that. I will be here for we'll that. We'll have Jake Croucher on, who is Mister, you know, Betman. Yeah. Right. He's gonna. He'll yeah. get us all over the uh, draft pop props and probably scare me with some weird name he says with his accent. And yeah. I'm like, I don't watch that guy. <laughs> right? Remember that? Cody Mark. Your life flashed Mark. before your eyes. You're like, I have never I even have looked at this guy. He I could go in the first round. I can still remember how my, my heart was pumping. I was like, I missed somebody. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe this. <laughs> yeah, late riser. Who is that player? Late riser. Oh, you're from Australia. I can't understand Did what Cody you're saying. Did Cody Mock end up going in the first round? No. Early second, second oh, okay. early second. That was right. all for naught. Even. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it geez. was. Um, but yeah, we're, we'll be back. And then I think we got Thursday mm -hmm. in the barn, baby. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. A lot of people are asking about that. All right, good, good. I'm, I'm excited to do it. I'm really excited I about know. it. I know. We're going to have fun, and hopefully we'll get one drink into you this year. I will year. definitely do one right? drink. Now, I do yeah. have to go back home afterwards, but oh. the draft is like three hours. Yeah. And so. Right. I'll have time, you know, an early, yeah. early drink. Maybe I will do an Uber. Yeah, yeah. I'll pay for your Uber. Okay, okay. Chris right. will pay for my Uber. Gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. You'll be slaughtered by pick 22. <laughs> <laughs> You'll know if I got an Uber or You're not like, by lions, how. Lions, yeah. lions. I mean, pick 29. Yeah, I mean, you'll that, be by really the end slaughtered. I know. You got I no have, chance. I have this feeling, too, the Lions are going to trade out of the first round. It's like the draft is there in Detroit. It's like everyone's going to be anticipating it, and they're going to trade out. Oh, of that, that pick, would stink. That it would kind of stink. I know. I hope they don't do that. I hope not. But all right, Guys, you know where to find us. Keep sending in all the good questions, thoughts, whatever. We'll try to address as many as possible. Subscribe, rate, and review. You know where to find us. Everybody be good out there. Have a great weekend. Okay, no major sports really going on this weekend. So enjoy yourselves because we got a full week of NFL draft yeah. next week. All right? So everybody be good. Peace out, everybody. Clap, Clap it, it up. up.
Yo, yo, homies, what's up? I know it's the off-season, but it's never the off-season on Chris Sims Unbutton. Me and Ahmed Fareed are going to be here for it all. You know we got free agency. We're going to break it all down. The draft, the rankings of positions, of course, we're going to unpack it all. Hit subscribe, get to my free agency reactions, 2024 draft rankings and more. Thanks again for watching. Peace out, homies. See you soon.